Okay. Welcome to my lecture. Today I will deliver about the theory of plasticity, which is belongs to metal forming process and analysis subject. This is for the MSc manufacturing engineering students for first year and second semester under the department of mechanical design and manufacturing engineering which is under comes under school of mechanical chemical materials engineering and myself dr perumalla janaki ramulu associate professor and director for coe advanced manufacturing engineering and this subject This is the course content which explains about theory of elasticity, theory of plasticity, zip line model theories, role form, metal forming process which specifically bulk forming process and sheet metal forming process and also unconventional forming process will be delivered in this course. And in that I think we have discussed already conventional manner theory of elasticity and now uh, we are proceeding to the theory of plasticity through your online course. In this theory of plasticity, we are going to discuss about introduction to the theory of plasticity, stress space yield criterion for metals, one mices yield criterion, Tresca's yield criterion, yield surface, basic considerations of plastic theory, plasticity theory, simple models, material behavior, Levy missiles, and pronantal row stress, uh, stress strain relations will be covered from the theory of plasticity. In this, we are going to learn about the how metals will behave during the permanent deformation, which the, in the theory of elasticity we have seen how the metals will behave under this uh, recoverable deformation phenomena, which is not a permanent deformation. Whereas, the plus theory of plasticity will explain how the material will behave during the permanent deformation and how, how the mathematical modeling and how the mathematical equations can be express, expressed through the physical phenomena, how we can extract the equations related to the plasticity of the different metals can be seen and we can derive them to explain their physical behavior in terms of the permanent deformation. So, when we are discussing about the plastic deformation any material, there are so many metals, materials existed in this inverse on the earth. So, for that, for each knowing about the behavior of the each material, it is very, very important that theory of plastic deformation, which is the major, major deformation phenomena to make the out um, product uh, in, into the useful manner for which so, if you are dealing the materials under the different conditions, when we are studying the permanent deformation, we should know how we can relate those deformation phenomena through mathematical equations can be seen through this plastic theory, plasticity theory. So, when you are discussing, especially if you see in the metals and other crystalline material, the occurrence of plastic deformations at the micro level is due to motion of the dislocations and the migration of grain boundaries on the micro level. So, plastic deformation when you are seeing at the micro level, we can see the dislocation phenomena and the migration of grain boundaries from one layer to one level to another level. So, these things can be seen in terms of the mathematical expressions which can ex which will explain the physical behavior of a uh, real time behavior of the any material. So, in that we are proceeding how the these things can be explained. So, we can see the plastic deformations are normally rate independent that is the stress induced are independent of the rate of deformation. Once again the plastic deformations are normally rate independent that is the stresses induced are independent of the rate of deformation. When you are applying the load, when you are going for the either tension or the compression of any mechanical test, 
So, the deformation once it occurs, it is not depending on the rate of, uh, it is not depends on the rate at which we are going to deform the material. So, this is independent of the rate of deformation. So, the stresses which are induced into the material should must be independent of rate of deformation. This is marked contact a classical Newtonian uh, fluids for example, where the stresses levels are governed by the rate of deformation through the viscosity of the fluid. So, these uh, rate of independent the stresses induced in the, the materials it is independent of the deformation this can be correlate with the classical Newtonian fluids. So, plastic theory began in 1864 which was proposed by Trescas by doing so many experiments. He did experiments especially on the extrusion of the metals and he published so many things. From there he derived the some yield criterion. Further people have started about the thinking of the deformation phenomena based on the Trescas theory and followed by the Saint Venant, Levy, Van Mises, Henke and Pranantal. And later on it has been processed with by so many researchers and the mathematicians who have worked on the metals and it has gone. So, later on when 90s and 80s, 80s and 90s uh, have come, so in that powerful computers have come with that so many things can be virtually we can see that actual deformation and the through the computational aspects of for the different complex plasticity problems. That is how the plasticity theory has been derived in so in the different manner and but to observe the plasticity plastic plasticity behavior we can consider the simplest and well known test which is a standard test for any material to know the actual behavior through the mechanical test aspect for that one. So, tension test which is the most useful test for the and we know tension test is not new, but this is a must uh, uh, it has to be performed for any material we should perform the tension test to know the actual mechanical behavior of any material. And we know we have taken we can take different types of samples either it is a cylindrical or it is a sheet metal test or it is a rectangular type of samples. Anything you take there must be some standard specifications for to make the tensile test specimens in that we know how to conduct the test, what are the parameters to be conducted and what are, what are the parameters to be implemented on the tensile test before going for any material. So, this we know that tensile test can be tested through the universal testing machine. So, if you see the figure 1 which is explains about the force displacement curve, in the force displacement uh, curve if you see here. So, along the x we can take the displacement along the y we can take the load which will be applied that means force we can apply. So, up to the point A we can see up to point A below the point A there is no e, there is no uh, there is a linear relation between force and displacement that means the recoverable deformation we can see up to the A. Once A point A crosses that point has been identified as a yielding that means stresses has been introduced induced into the material to make further elongation. So, for that so once A has been once A has been crossed by the deformation then material it will reach to the B that B point is a to B will be identified that that is the what the your actual complete uh, the permanent deformation point, uh, zone from A to B. So, if you suppose when you are applying the load at the point B if you release the load. So, we can predict and we can expect that it will reach to the point C. Okay. 
So, that is what the loading and when you unload it, it will reach to the C point that is our imaginative aspect if you take then from C to O we can say that point will not come to the your original position for that 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 uh, zone that that whatever we are indicating from O to C is your plastic deformation zone because it is not coming to its original position whereas when the pre one more uh, aspect we can think of when B is releasing to this one there is a possibility of moving from slightly moving from this place to another place this is called the elastic de elastic deformation where again if you load from the elastic deformation then it will go to the point D that is what we are tell telling as a failure point where strain hardening will be exceeded to fail the material. So, what we can understand here when you are expressing the tensile testing aspect so how we can see the deformations and what is the elastic range how the flow force and displacement behavior for the different materials to to understand this one we can also see two important things we can we have to observe that is after the onset of plastic deformation the material will be seen to undergo negligible volume change that is it is incompressible. So, from the tensile testing aspect once we have conducted the tensile test we identified the different zones as shown in the figure 1 force this from the force displacement diagram we can see here from 0 to A we can say that this is the linear deformation that means it is a recoverable deformation which can be uh, once you remove the load from the A point it will reach to the it will reach to original position. So, shape distortion may not will not be there from A to B we can say it is a plastic deformation zone where shape deformation distortion will be that material uh, stretching will be will take some place. So, in this from A to B the important observation is that after the onset of the plastic deformation the material will be seen to undergo negligible volume change that means from A to B when the deformation is continuing the volume remains constant this is called what in the uh, general physics terminology incompressible phenomenon and the other uh, another observation is the force displacement curve more or less same regardless of rate at which the at which the specimen is stretched at least at the moderate temperature that is one more the force displacement curve is more or less same regardless uh, of the rate at which the specimen is stretched. So, what material suppose if you take any kind of material it belongs to non ferrous or ferrous materials or any other anisotropic material if you take into consideration suppose you are taking the one non ferrous material like aluminum you are testing of any series when you are testing the aluminum once the graph has been formed it is irrespective of your the rate at which the specimen is stretched. So, at any condition especially at the moderate temperatures that means below recrystallization if you should not consider the high temperature zones. So, in that zone in that moderate temperature zones if you take any rate of temp deformation phenomena of any material their behavior will not change that means force displacement curve will be similar. 